All right, are we rolling? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, this is another technique that would also be something that I would suggest you practice at work. It's called counter conditioning. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video, the two tests, can I get my dog to sit and will it take a treat? If the dog won't sit or take a treat, we're too close. So what I would do is, because you mentioned that she is reactive to dogs that come into the playroom after she's already established herself. So what I would do is I would put her on a leash and do this on your day off or when you have some time and let her be in there, let her establish herself. And then when, you, you know the schedule, when people are gonna mm -hmm. come, come next. Next time somebody comes in, I would put her on a leash, take her to the far side of the room and as far away as you can go. And then put her into a sit and then basically have her looking directly at the dog. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these high value treats. These are a meat based treat. See how I can kind of redirect her focus, whichever direction I want her to go. So what I'm gonna do is just let her nibble on the treat while she is looking at the other dog. So what we're gonna do is do that, and, and when you're doing this, you should have somebody else that does not allow the other dog to approach her. And so the idea is we want her to associate when another dog comes into the pen, I get a high value treat, as long as I'm calm. Mm -hmm. And that's why we put her to sit, and then we give her the treat. So what we wanna do is we wanna basically do that and then I would have one of your you know, staffers take the dog out of the room again. And then I would have you take two steps closer towards the entrance. And then pull out another treat. And then you want to be doing this first and then you signal the staffer to come in. So the staffer comes in. She's looking at the dog and while you should be getting these treats. And so you could even have the staffer bring that dog in on a leash so she has more control. And then as soon as the treat goes away, then I would say, okay. And then she turns around and the dog leaves the area. So I would keep on doing this and you're collapsing the distance between her and the entrance until eventually it gets to the point where she almost can't sit down or you put the treat in front of her face, she's trying to look around it. She's telling you at that point, she's at her limit, she's about to explode. Mm -hmm. So we don't wanna push past that, that's a mistake a lot of people make. So what we wanna do at that point is we stop, I would have the person take the other dog out of the room, give her a second to recover, and then I would take her out of the room herself completely, take her back to your office, and then she's done and then the staffer brings the other dog in and then gets to do this. So this way she starts to associate when other dogs, new dogs come into the playroom, I get rewarded with a high value treat. Now, uh, the, uh, again, we wanna stop before she reacts. Now, just like the other exercise, we got closer and closer. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be something you're gonna have to do over the course of several days. And it might be a week or two and you're gonna gradually get closer and closer. And some days you might only take one or two steps closer to the, other, to the approaching dog, and that's as far as you can make it. She's gonna be the one that sets the tone. So don't keep pushing her past what she can actually do. Once she erupts, it's too late. Mm -hmm. The idea is we wanna basically have her practice that whole ritual without exploding and without it ending in a fight. When dogs get into a habit of doing something enough over and over again, after a while, that just becomes the new way, that their new normal. And then that's just the way they operate going forward. So um, that is basically counter conditioning in a nutshell. And it's something that I would, I think both of these techniques are going to be things that you're going to need to work on. The second one uses some counter, or the first one uses some counter conditioning principles. Uh, but the idea is we want her to associate the presence of other dogs, whether, you know, a barking dog out and about or a dog entering the play in as being a good positive thing.